says that when you visit someone's home, you should be a polite guest. If being polite in the game of hockey is reflected in losing in the other team's home rink, then the Boko Buckaroos have been less than obliging. The Richmond Sockeyes have lost only one home game in 15 tries this season. That loss was to the Buckaroos on November 2nd. The team from the Tri-Cities is back in Richmond, and tonight they're looking to be as polite as they were that evening in November. From the Minerua Arena in Richmond, this is Rogers for Sports. And good evening and welcome. I'm Mark Jones along with Mark Patrick from JRFM and 93.7. That is 93.7 JRFM and 600 The Bridge. We're glad to be with you here tonight. The Port Coquitlam Buckaroos and the Richmond Sockeyes in Pacific International Junior Hockey League action. Mark Patrick, we'll get to you in just a moment as we've just got underway. Sockeyes out there starting a line of Ivan Usyk. He's on right wing with Overgaard on the left. Centering it is Brad Swanson. Defense are Robertson and Dennis. Sockeyes in their home white with, with red and black trim. 18 seconds gone. Ivan Usyk shot as Brad Bailey, the starting keeper, makes a stop there. And the Sockeyes are going right after it right here early on. Tying up there. That's Overgaard. Coming out with the puck now for the Buckaroos is number 20, Jeff Lindsay. The puck goes down the ice. Jeff Godet in net for Richmond. Behind the net it goes. Centering pass. Ivan Usyk picks it up. Weak pass. Picked off there and into the corner. Picked off. And the puck is just in the corner now. Played up to Overgaard out to Ivan Usyk. With Swanson on his white. right. Ivan Usyk, his shot. And it just goes off the boards. A minute gone, first period, no score. Ivan Usyk pressing in there for the Sockeyes. After there for the Buckaroos is Phil Katnick. Centered there for Ryan Field. Ryan Reed, rather, and out they come. As the defense change up for the Sockeyes, Coy Myers now out there with Wade Bully. Puck shot down into the Buckaroo zone. Icing is indicated. That'll give us our first stoppage in play with a minute 32 gone in this first period. Mark Patrick, your thoughts on this uh, for our first uh, telecast here of the 1996 and the first one in a little while here on the Rogers Four. Hey, and I'm excited to do it. These two teams have played each other six times this year and they've decided nothing. Both teams have won three times. Both teams have lost three times. These team teams play great against each other. We're in for a great game tonight. This is going down the stretch of the playoffs. Important hockey here tonight. Absolutely. And the Buckaroos trying to get on the board with some pressure, and the shot right there, and covered up by Godet. A quick whistle, but right on the doorstep, Mark Davies back in the lineup, the captain for the Buckaroos, number 19, and he's back in the lineup and right out there. He's out there on the line and with Alan Franks on his left and Ebner on his right. Well, that shot from the point was a tricky one. It wasn't going that fast, but it changed directions about three times, and Godet said, uh-uh, I'm not even playing with this one. I'm covering it up, and he, he did the smart thing. Off the faceoff, the Sockeye is having trouble clearing the Buckaroos, keeping it in nicely, centering pass. It'll go, they score! Beautiful goal by Ebner. Mike Ebner, 1-0, Buckaroos. That's Ebner's 21st goal of the season. He's been hot for the Buckaroos this year, and he made a move on Godet. Godet really didn't have much of a chance. Ebner had lots of time in front of the net, and he just put it by Godet to the left side and low. Beautiful goal by Mike Ebner. This guy's been hot for the Buckaroos all year long. That is his uh, 50th point of the season. He beat Godet on the stick side. 147 the time of the goal. Here's the announcement. Mike Ebner, assisted by number 19, Mark Davies, and by number 10, Phil Kadanek. Time of the goal, 147. Didn't pick up the last assist on that one, but it's Ebner from... Time from the goal, Davies, anyway, the Buckaroos are under pressure. Now the Crane throws a puck at the net there. One nothing, Port Coquitlam. A minute, two minutes, fifteen seconds gone in this opening period. Now we have a whistle, a stoppage in play. Well, that that goal by Ebner really came against the grain. Sockeyes had a great start to the first period. They were in the Buckaroos' end for a good minute and a bit, and then. Uh, all of a sudden, that goal by Ebner shocked Godet and shocked the Sockeyes. 
here is the goal right here, and as you can see, we just caught the end of it. Uh, Ebner had a lot of room in front, just put it low to the stick side, like you said, got at not much of a chance. Out there on the faceoff for the Sockeyes, Rob Yule takes it. Now the puck is in behind the net. Puck comes out racing after there's Jeff Lindsay. He's got Riley Berth with him, but Robertson plays it into the neutral zone. The Buckaroos fire it right back into the Sockeye zone, though. Rod Armstrong out there after the puck. Ryan Reed fighting for it. Armstrong has the puck, plays it off the boards, not out. Faulkner has it. Two number sixes fighting along the board. Now Robertson plays it ahead, gets it to Ewell. Rob Ewell with Armstrong. Ewell across the line to Nakasura, and it's shot there and turned aside. Sockeye is trying to apply a bit of pressure. Robertson's shot didn't quite get through. It goes to Bailey's right, or left, rather. And out come the Buckaroos. Whoa, nice hit there by Overgaard. He just rocked Jeff Lindsay. As Overgaard tries to use his size and get his team maybe following suit. Swanson in there. Puck comes back to Robertson. He has to turn, make a couple moves. Loses the puck. The Buckaroos have it. Setting up the shot. Got it to save. The rebound there, and Ivan Usyk has the puck, and out he comes. Carries it out to center. Buckaroos not giving the Sockeyes really much room here on these last couple shifts, just going right to them. Played three minutes, 55 seconds of the opening period. It's one to nothing, Port Coquitlam. And icing is waved off. Ivan Usyk gets the puck ahead to Overgaard. He's got two men to beat. Overgaard with Swanson. Overgaard tries to get it through to Swanson, but it's blocked there nicely by David Martin, who comes back. Martin with Franks. And and we go. Ivan Usyk to Swanson. He tries to make a dipsy doodle move there, and he's beaten by the Buckaroo player. Swanson after the puck, still against Davies. There's a hit along the boards, and a penalty is indicated. It's going to be called roughing on Brad Swanson of the Sockeyes. Buckaroos are going on the power play. Well, Swanson took out Davies here right in front of the Buckaroos penalty box, and it was a dangerous hit. It was right in the corner of the glass, and it's good that they've got padding there. If there wasn't, Davies could have been uh, a bit injured on that play. Davies is back into the lineup. He uh, suffered a, he was in a car accident a, 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 a while ago. Here's the replay on that hit from the other end of the ice. It wasn't much of a hit. It's questionable call is Gregory called roughing. Two minutes for roughing. Time of the call, 4.38. And there you heard it, as mentioned by Mark Patrick, roughing to Swanson, so the Buckaroos on their first power play of the game, and out they come. That's Alan Franks carrying the puck, gets it over to Davies. Davies, around the net he goes. Where he stops, no one knows. Back he puts it to Katnick. Gets the pass through, Davies has it. Jody Crane racing after the puck. Two number tens going against Katnick. Crane out there in a penalty killing role. And defense for the Sockeyes. Robertson and Dennis with Crane and Plant up front. Paul Sockeyes can't clear it. Centered towards the front of the net. Robertson fires it down into the neutral zone. Sockeyes look unorganized. This is a great time for the Buckaroos to go up 2-0 if they can score on this power play. The Sockeyes look like they're all over the place. Dennis can't get the puck out. Now Crane fires it down the ice, and of course he can do that for another 47 seconds as that's the time remaining in Swanson's penalty for roughing. Five minutes gone, first period. 1-0 Buckaroos on a goal by number 17, Mike Ebner. Brad Bailey handles it in behind, leaves it there. Gets it ahead to Riley Berth, centered for Reed. Reed cross the line and it's played all the way back into the Buckaroo zone. The Sockeyes killing this penalty. Nakasuru after. Now Russ Brew skating across the line. Loses the puck but manages to see one of the Buckaroo players land on the ice in the process. Now eight seconds left in the power play. Nakasuru tries to get it out, not out. 
Buckaroo setting up. Power plays over, but they've still got control towards the net. Got it, got interfered with there a little bit. Now we have a stoppage in play. We could have a penalty here. That's Foley and Jeff Lindsay going at it down the corner. Talked to Jeff Crossley before the game, and I was asking him what players had stood out in his mind on the Sockeyes, and one of them was Wade Boley. He said he's just playing great. He's the captain of the Sockeyes. He's been playing really well in the last month or so, and he even caused a penalty as Lindsay's going off. Oh, we got two penalties, in fact. And Boley will be joining him there. Both getting roughing penalties at 6 minutes and 50 seconds, so no power play, but uh, those two players will be off for two minutes. Well, the Sockeyes killed that penalty. That was a big kill because if the Buckaroos could have scored there. They would have really taken momentum, and the Sockeyes don't look good right now. They've got to turn this around. As we mentioned it at the outset, only one loss on home the ice, and that's to these same Buckaroos. Here's the penalty Jeff call. Lindsay and the Sockeyes, number 17, Wade Bowley, both two minutes for roughing. Time of the calls, 6.50. So the face-off comes back into the Sockeye zone. Is that puck just went out of clear? Here's the replay of that goal again by Ebner. There's the move. Beautiful move. He just freezed Godet. Godet's looking at him like, how did you do that? Well, it looked like he tried to get the right pad out just enough, but they managed, he managed to uh, sneak around Godet. Almost the old trick that Mike Richter pulled uh, in the Stanley Cup final against Burry on the penalty shot. You know, he managed to come out and get the pad just enough to just hold the puck it. so he couldn't tuck it around. Yeah. I think that's what it's almost looked a little bit like what Gaudette was trying to do there. And uh, unsuccessful on that try. But Gaudette's back with the Sockeyes. If you remember him last year, he rejoined the Sockeyes after our last telecast. And he's up there in the standings in the goaltending uh, goals against average, too. We'll get to those stats uh, when we have a moment. Coy Myers puts the puck in as the Sockeyes are trying to put some pressure on now. With just seven and a half minutes gone in this opening period, one to nothing, Port Coquitlam, as you're watching the PIJHL on Rogers 4. Sockeyes and the Buckaroos here at Richmond's Mineral Arena. Howitt trying to get away with the puck. Now just plays it in. No one gets it, and back come the Buckaroos. That's Brian Youngson coming down the left side. Youngson behind the net, the wraparound. And a nice try there by Youngson. And the majority of the action is for the last three, four minutes has been in the Sockeye zone. Down the ice it goes, no icing. Bailey comes out to play the puck. Being watched by Brendan West. Puck tied up in there now. The Buckaroos are trying some hitting here. Swanson in there. He's got West in the corner. Now the puck comes loose, and out comes Josh Ridgway. Gets it ahead there. The pass for Summers didn't get through. Puck shot in. McLean has it. Being watched closely there by Josh Ridgway. McLean fighting along the boards in there with Alan Franks. Franks racing after the puck, being watched by McLean once again. Centering pass, a score! That's Ebner again. Mike Ebner. 2 nothing, Buckaroos. Beautiful goal by Ebner, and this time, he said, I'm not putting it on the ground, I'm going right upstairs on you, Jeff. Watch this. Pass out in front, he just roofed it. Ebner knows what to do. This guy can score, and Godet's got to be ready for that. Oh, that pass was a beautiful pass, and Ebner just nailed it. Godet's looked a bit shaky. We talked about Godet early on. I talked to Crosley about him. Godet's played six games since he rejoined the Sockeyes. He's got a 4.24 goals against average. He hasn't been playing as good as he did last Mike year. Crosby's waiting him for waiting for him by to do that. Mark Davies, as well as number 12, Alan Franks. Time of the goal, 8:56. Well, that's almost a repeat repeat of the other goal. Ebner from Davies. There may have been another assist on that goal, but those two in on it anyways. 8:56 the time of it. It's two to nothing, and we haven't even played the first 10 minutes of this uh, first period here. And there is a concern, Jeff Crosley, I think it would be fair to say. His assistant, Sylvain Leone, alongside him there. Yeah. 
The scoring power is not a problem for the Sockeyes. They've scored 180 goals in 31 games. So scoring is not a problem if they can only get down to the other end of the ice. There's a hit from behind, and that's going to be a penalty. Delayed penalty coming up. I'm prematurely calling that. We'll see if that's what it is. I could be wrong. No, I think it's you're being, right. It's being called actually roughing, so that's... It could have been worse than roughing. You're right, Mark. That was definitely a hit from behind. That's Mark Davies, a captain of the Buckaroos. Let's take a look. Ouch. I don't like seeing hits like that. Those are scary hits. Sockeyes have got a great chance here to get back into this hockey game. Yeah, it's early. 10-28 left in the first period, but they're down 2 to nothing. These Sockeyes have got to start scoring. They're averaging just about six goals a game. 19, Mark Davies. Two minutes for roughing. Time of the call, 9.34. 7.34, I believe it was hard to read that clock there. The time of the penalty, roughing the call on Davies. Sockeyes on their first power play of the game, and out they come. West, Howitt, and Tarr, the line. West with the puck, moving into the slot. To Neil Robertson, moving in. Robertson moving in with the puck. Tries to get it through Tarr with the puck, and they manage to clear it from harm's way and out and down the ice. That was dangerous there. Nice move by Robertson to bring it right into the slot. When he got there, he didn't get a good shot away. Now Tarr and a little bit, or rather Robertson, being chased there by Jeff Lindsay. Howard in there to help him out, trying to freeze the puck. The Buckaroos are anyways. Lindsay's trying to, but they get the puck free, and out comes West. Weak pass, but it gets to Tarr with West and Howard. Three on two. West dropped for Tarr. Tarr having a bit of trouble, gets it through. Tarr gets the puck back, plays it in behind the net. Howard after it. Martin in there, and he gets it out. And the Buckaroos are doing a lot of things right right now. The Sockeyes are having a little bit of trouble early on in this first period. The Sockeyes are just not clicking with their passes. They're being sloppy, and they got to smarten up with their passing. Bully, the shot. Turned aside there by Bailey, and a nice stick save there on the part of Mr. Brad Bailey. Over guard to Wolf Swanson. Brad Swanson back to Bowley. Bowley manages to keep it on side over to Myers. Myers winds up, shoots. Bailey, the rebound. Oh, and the, that was Zyvan Usyk trying to get through. And Bailey managed to block his path. Now the puck is cleared out. Try to clear it along the line, and it comes outside the zone. The penalty is over. Davies racing after out of the box. Now decides to go to the bench. The Sockeyes did nothing on that power play. Here come the Buckaroos back at full strength. Youngston, the centering pass. And look at how they jam up the front of the net. They're just, they're causing all kinds of commotion. Now the puck comes back there to David Martin in an outside the line. Seven minutes, 57 seconds remaining first period. Port Coquitlam two, Richmond nothing. This is the PIJHL on Rogers four. From Richmond's Mineral Arena, Mark Jones and Mark Patrick along with you here. There is a shot from the point. It goes over the net as Youngson got a shot away. There's a hit along the boards. Ivan Usnick, the recipient of that. Down the ice it goes after to Swanson, but icing's going to be called on the Richmond Sockeyes with 7.29 left in this opening period of play. Well, I think it's obvious, Mark, how Mark Davies has made an impact with his return. He was out most part of the year because of a car accident. He's got five assists in two games. He's got two tonight in the first period. This guy has sparked this Coquitlam team. I think they look like a different team with Mark Davies in the lineup. 7.29 left in this first period, and the Sockeyes trailed two to nothing. There's a nice opportunity by the Buckaroos on the replay. Now back to action. Davies racing in there, and a quick whistle. But Davies was racing right towards Godet, and Davies will use his size and try to barrel right towards the net. We were talking earlier about Godet. Uh, he's got a goals against average of 4.24. He's uh, 354 minutes played, has allowed uh, 25 goals, and he's ranked sixth uh, coming into tonight's game. Play six, I guess we should say, in, uh, in terms of lowest uh, goals against average. McLean 
Tanaka Sura trying to clear it out. Out comes Rob Ewell with Armstrong. Ewell down the left side. The centering pass. Armstrong tries to get it. And he was interfered with a little bit there, but more than anything, he may have maybe lost an edge. Went down, couldn't get it. Now the puck is tied up, and we'll have a face off in the Buckaroo zone. Good drive by Nakata, or Armstrong, actually, to go to the net. He really went to the net hard, and I think you're right, Mark. He did lose an edge. It looked like he almost could have been tripped, but he lost an edge going to the net and fell almost right in to Brad Bailey. There you see it, 6.59 left in this opening period of play. As we look at this here, Armstrong with a great opportunity. He could only have connected by being chased by the Buckaroos player and uh, went down. I think some of the fans maybe thought it could have been a penalty, but uh, nonetheless, we have a face-off in there. Wust taking it as he centers Howitt and Tarr. Can't see, that's number 18. That's Ridgeway. He's being waved out for the Buckaroos. Now coming in to take it is Ryan Reed, a right winger. Off the face-off. Dennis gets it to Scott. Might have hit Tar and it just goes wide. Buckaroo shot out the Sockeyes last meeting, two to nothing, just before Christmas in Port Coquitlam, centering pass for Tar. And they're doing that right now. It's two to nothing once again. So the Sockeyes have gone, what, almost over 70 minutes of. Uh, hockey without scoring a goal against this Buckaroos team. The Sockeyes are a team that averages almost six goals a game. Look at that hit. There's a penalty as West was taken down right in front of our position here. Aaron Faulkner. And the referee, Kerry Gregory, was in good position to see that. He is sending the Buckaroos player to the penalty box. Two minutes for roughing will be the call Here's the replay. 13.36. That's not it. It's coming up You just missed the penalty there. It just was on the right side of the screen. Aaron Faulkner has played seven games this year for the Buckaroos. He's got 30 penalty minutes. So he's averaging almost five a game. And the Sockeyes Port test their second power play of the evening. They're 0 for 1. one penalty. As we mentioned in this 2 to nothing game for the Buckaroos. With now 6-10 remaining in this Port opening period penalty. of play. Around the net it goes. Ivanusic picks it up on the near boards, trying to set up. Ivanusic back to Bully. Bully with the shot. Bailey gets to the save. Six, confidently Aaron Faulkner, stops it. Two minutes for roughing. We'll have a face Start off the in call, there. 13:36. Brad Bailey is uh, the big stopper for the Buckaroos. He's played 19 games this year, 11 wins, seven losses, one tie, with a goals against average of 3.53. Yes, he has one shutout this year. Is against the Sockeyes. Sockeyes have got to do something here on the power play. 132 left in the power play. Lots of time. Swanson, Overgaard, and Ivan Usyk out there. Bowley and Myers at the point. They've got to make something happen to get themselves back into this hockey game. Off the faceoff, Swanson took the draw. The puck goes in behind the net. Ivan Usyk, he's hit there. Hmm. Overgaard trying to get out from behind the net, and the Buckaroos come out shorthanded, so they'll probably just dump it in, just... and that's what they do. Coletta, Mark Coletta, number 14, plays it in there. Right after it is Jeff Lindsay. Bully to Ivan Usyk. 50 seconds gone in the power play. Ivan Usyk across the line, tied up there, waiting for help. Centers it through, and it's picked off and cleared down the ice. Their passes are just not working. Ivan Usyk tried to feed it in front, and none of the Sockeyes were there. Easy clear for the Buckaroos. Godet almost got in a bit of trouble as Coletta raced in after the puck. Godet tried to play it. Now it's tied up. Now Swanson has it. Across to West. Neil Robertson with the puck. Puts it in with 32 seconds left in the penalty to the Buckaroos. Back to Dennis. Dennis with the shot through the crown, and it just goes by on. Right now, Bailey gets the puck as it's thrown towards the net. He throws. Looks like he threw a bit of a punch there at uh, Ivan Usyk. Maybe he didn't like Ivan Usyk stepping into his crease, which... Uh, might have happened there. I don't know. Yeah, that was number two, Corey Dick. He didn't like Ivan Usyk in front of the net. Watch this here. Ivan Usyk will be sitting right there. Oh, maybe he got... He hacked. He hacked at Bailey. Trying to whack the puck in there at the last second. And Dick saw it and wasn't taking anything of it. 
So West in his late stages of this power play. 18 seconds left in it. Takes the face off. Off the face off. Comes to Tar. Dennis has it to Robertson. Behind the net it goes. Brendan West with the puck. Dennis is back at the point. West gets it in front. It's now cleared out and down the ice. They kill that power play, that penalty. 0 for 2. The Sockeyes go so far in the evening. Four minutes, 20 seconds remaining. First period, 2 to nothing. Port Coquitlam over the Richmond Sockeyes at Richmond Arena. The Buckaroos are playing really well defensively. And that's one thing that Grant Kerr, head coach of the Buckaroos, said before the game that they're not playing well at is defense. And if they want to go anywhere in the playoffs, they've got to tighten up their defense. They look great tonight against one of the highest scoring teams in the league. How it shot. Off the boards, a rebound there. Tar racing in. They got the one shot, but they're not getting it. Any chance at the rebounds. West gets around one man. Howard in there to help him out. Howard in front. Tar couldn't get it. Now Tar has it. Rebound. Oh, and they're just not getting the puck. They're not getting the puck lock right now. The puck is just bouncing everywhere but onto the sticks. And it stays a 2-0 game. Now put in and Tar carries the puck out. Sean Tar. A three-year member of the Grandview Steelers before joining the slot guys. Puck comes back to McLean. McLean, the centering pass. Bailey tips it aside. Russ Brew dodges. Maybe got part of the check, but dodged a good part of it. Plant trying to play the puck in, and out come the Buckaroos. Riley Bird has it, fires it in. Two minutes, 50 seconds remaining, first period, two to nothing, Port Coquitlam on two goals by Mike Edner. Puck not out, Gil Fillin, plays a two far head for Blunt, Blunt after the puck, two on one, Green joining the play, Crane in front, he scores! Coquitlam, the Sockeyes are on the board. Well, Van Plant made that play happen. He passed it right out in front, and Jody Crane was right where he was supposed to be. And Crane just had to tap it in. Here's Plant down the right side, and watch him feed the pass across. Beautiful pass. Crane's there to tap it in. Great goal by Crane. A beautiful pass by Dan Plant. Late in his first period, the Sockeyes pull within 1 229 left. There might be a third assist on that goal. I, I didn't see if anybody passed it to Plant or not. Oh, we'll have to see. It should be Crane from Plant, but we'll wait for the official call. Here it is. By number 10, Jody Crane. Assisted by number 11, Dan Plant. Time the goal, 17-31. We'll get ready for uh, Jeff Crosley, uh, who will be joining us here at the end of the first period. And our usual feature, Steve Braverman, not with us tonight. We hope to have him back on our next taping. Ivan Usyk shot, the rebound, they score! <laughs> Jeff Overgaard, it's all tied! Overgaard got the pass from Ivan Usyk, put it top shelf as we take a look at it here, Mark Patrick. Well, again, Ivan Usyk positioned himself right in front, right where you got to be. And he just had a great chance to bury it, and he did. Overguard came in, too. Nice pass. Actually, it was Overguard with the goal. I thought it was. He put it right upstairs on Ivan Usyk's rebound. It was a rebound. I, I said it was the pass, but he got the rebound there. And within a matter of 30 seconds, the Sockeyes have produced two goals. It's all tied here at two, with 1.59 remaining in this first period. Wow. That didn't Richmond's take him long. second goal scored by number 25, Jeff Overgaard. Assisted by number 15, Brad Swanson. And by number 18, Marian Ivanusik. Time of the goal, 18.01. And the Buckaroos, you can, I, you can, I, I, you notice it, that Bailey now seems a little bit shaken. Two goals in 30 seconds, and out they come again. How it offside as he was coming in with West, but you could see Bailey, when he was out playing the puck there just seconds ago, he looked shaky. And, and what the Sockeyes have got to do now is they got to keep taking shots on Bailey for the, the remainder of this period. See if you can get one by him again, because he is rattled. It's a great time to take a shot from even long out. He is 
he is rattled. It's a great time to try and score. Given the way the period was going uh, about uh, a minute or so ago, I don't know if we would have wanted to be speaking to Jeff Crosby, what kind of mood he would have been in. And I'm sure it's improved somewhat with this team getting two goals in 30 seconds. Yeah, that'll help. Yeah, I, I was getting a little nervous about uh, having to interview Crosley, but uh, it's all better now. Two goals can make a world of a difference. Yeah, we're a minute and 24 seconds away from the end of this first period, and just about that much time away from Jeff Crosley, head coach of the Sockeyes, joining my colleague Mark Patrick for our usual first intermission feature with the head coach of the Richmond Sockeyes. Bailey with the puck. Leaves it behind the net, Nakasuru. As we've still got some hockey to finish up here in this first go around of this game tonight. A minute five remaining, first period. All tied at two as out come the Buckaroos. Lindsay across the line, drop pass to Lindsay. Oh! Got it, got across, but the puck went, well, just snuck by the outside of the post, anyways. But oh, that was so close. So close to the Buckaroos taking the lead again. Now in front of the net, there's a bit of rough stuff. Gil Fillin, along with Riley Berth, and they have some words, and uh, I don't think too much is going to come of that. There was the replay. We just got the end. Maybe of we it. can see one more look at that, possibly. It was a great play by the Buckaroos. They set up, uh, was it Was it Ebner? It could have been. I. Uh, no, Lindsay. It was Lindsay, was it who, Lindsay who had the shot, and he just missed it. He didn't get, all, all, he didn't get a lot on it. And it did just go wide of the net. Got it. Looked like he was in position as well to make the save if it was on net. Jody Crane off the faceoff with under a minute to play here in this first period. Crane in there with Brew. Dances by the Buckaroos player trying to time up there. That's Aaron Tom. The Buckaroos away they go again. That's Alan Franks. Buckaroos put it in. Delayed offside is indicated. As the Buckaroos player is still in there, he doesn't realize he's on a delayed offside. Gives the Sockeyes time to get the puck out. Plant plays it up, no one there, and Davies just gets the puck and plays it along the boards. Now McLean to Brew with 15 seconds left in this period. One last rush here for the Sockeyes. Plant in there, behind the net, Brew after the puck. Davies out there, the Buckaroos, Franks. Gets it ahead there. Puck tied up in skates. The last shot of the period. We got a penalty indicated. A little bit of rough stuff, too. Holding the call. And by Richmond's well, number one, down Jeff got it. Down on the ice. Six. And just trying to watch and see what the penalty call. There's a holding penalty indicated here at the end of the period, the 20-minute mark of the period. I'm not sure who it's to. But in any event, we know what the score is, and it's 2-2. And in a period of 30 seconds, the complexion of the game changed completely, or of that first period anyways, changed completely. And now we'll have, um, we take a look there at head coach Jeff, Jeff Crosby, the Sockeyes. He, uh, he discussed something momentarily there with one of the linesmen, his assistant, Sylvain Leone, as they come across the ice. And head coach Jeff Crosley will be joining us up here for our usual first intermission feature. Got to wonder what Grant Kerr, the head coach of the Buckaroos, is thinking. He was up 2-0, must have been pretty happy with the lead, and all of a sudden, bang, it's all tied at 2. I'm going to get this penalty here. Holding. Time of the call, 20 minutes. Gil Fillin, 2 minutes for holding. Yeah, Time Gil of the Fillin call, gets a penalty for holding at 20 minutes, and we'll get to that as Richmond Sockeyes head coach Jeff Crosley joins Mark Patrick. Jeff, thanks for joining us. Right, thanks. Jeff, thanks for joining us. Well, comments on the first period, it, uh, it looked ugly in the beginning. For the most part of the period, the team came back. What do you think, your comments? Yeah, we didn't, uh, we didn't get the start that we wanted to. We wanted to um, be a little more active and put a little more pressure on them. We came out pretty sluggish, um, didn't have our feet moving, and uh, we're sort of fortunate to uh, put a couple of shifts back-to-back -back and get back in the game. Is this kind of a team that loves to get right on you? Is it, what I could see was yeah. the players are right on your players right away. Yeah, and that's definitely, I mean, and that's hockey. I mean, you know, good teams do it. Um, the average teams don't do it as well. And um, we, we've gotten away with it uh, for a lot of the year, not really putting a lot of pressure on teams because we have some very talented players who can sometimes overcompensate for that. And um, 
Here's the goal by uh, where Plant set up Crane. That yeah, was a nice play. Dan hustled down the right wing and, and um, beat his man and fed Jody in front. So it was a nice play. Is the Buckaroo team a better team than their 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 record? Their third place in the league, 19 and 10. They seem they look like a great team tonight. Talk a bit about Grant Kerr's Buckaroos. I think they're they're a team that their their best hockey is definitely going to be from here on in. Um, they played the beginning of the season without their captain Mark Davies. A um, bunch of guys had some work uh, commitments and and weren't at every game. So um, through suspensions and and those two instances, they sort of uh, have gotten through the hardest part, I think, and and uh, are going to be a better team down the stretch. You got ten games left, including tonight's game before the playoffs. It's an important time. We talked earlier about this before the game. Your team hasn't had a, a slump yet this year. Are you worried about that? Yeah, I, I think I'm. I think I'm worried about it. But um, you know, we we've just uh, we've got to get to be a harder working team. I mean, uh, slump or no slump, whether we win. Uh, whether we win every game or or, um, or lose a bunch of games, we just need to uh, we need to play harder. We need to compete a little bit uh, more tenacity. Here's Ivan Usyk uh, taking a shot on it, and that Overgaard's goal. Yeah, Jeff did all the work in the corner here, um, battling off two guys, and then uh, Swanson made a nice play out, and uh, Overgaard was there to pounce on the rebound. Overgaard's been a, a big part of your team this year. He's uh, he had a bit of a slow start this year, and he's come on lately. He's yeah, he's played had a lot a, better. He's had an excellent season, and um, not just come on this year, but come on in the three years that he's been here. Um, you know, he was a, uh, a fringe player three years ago, and last year played a uh, a pretty consistent role, and this year he's really stepped it up to be one of the leaders on the team, so it's, uh, that's what you want to see in your program. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, thanks, Good luck guys. in the second period of the rest of the game. Jeff Crosley of the Richmond Sockeyes. And that'll about do it here as uh, we'll go to um, take a bit of a breather here. There just is a reaction in the background in case you're wondering that it's making a presentation to a, a young fan who uh, won in the puck shoot contest. Maybe we can get a shot of him down there on the ice. There's a young fan, won $500 cash uh, in uh, Dave's, uh, well, I guess we can mention the sponsor's name, Dave's Fish and Chips of uh, Steveston and the puck shoot and a uh, young fan down there who got won $500. If we can get a look there That's at a it. Um, a lot of money for a little kid. Anyways, congratulations to him. And that's uh, that's going to do it. At the end of uh, 20 minutes here at Richmond Arena, it's all tied at 2. Richmond 2, Pork Oak Whitlam 2. We'll return with the second period of tonight's game in just a moment. Welcome back to Richmond's Mineral Arena, where after one period of play, it's Richmond and the Port Coquitlam in a 2-2 tie. Mark Jones from the Sockeyes, along with Mark Patrick from 93.7 FM and AM 600. We're glad to have you with us here on the Rogers 4 Richmond coverage of the Pacific International Junior Hockey League. Buckaroos out to an early 2-0 lead, but the Sockeyes, within 30 seconds, scored two goals late in the period to tie it up. And that's where it stands as we're just underway. The Buckaroos on a power play thanks to a penalty right at the 20-minute mark to Chris Gilvillan on the Sockeyes. And the Buckaroos are setting up. In their dark red, Tom gets it across there to Franks. Franks coming out, and Davies goes down. And there's a penalty called. And some of the fans don't like that. It's going to go to Dean Dennis. Dean Dennis dropped Tom. And this could be interference or tripping. They're calling it roughing on Dennis at 46 seconds. So this will be one of the, I guess if we want to call it a key point in the game, this will be a key point to see what this two-man advantage the Buckaroos have got now. When I guess a penalty, I never, ever get it right. I, I said it could be tripping or interference. It was roughing. Of course. Well, this is a dangerous time here for the Sockeyes. Two men down for a minute 14. A great chance for the Buckaroos to retake the lead let's see what they do with this face off off the face off two minutes for roughing tom pass it across on the doorstep oh nice block there i believe that was west that blocked it there and around the boards and out it goes a minute gone in the period and just over a minute gone in the first penalty west with tar and bill bully the penalty killing team out there five on three for the buckaroos katnick setting up shoots off the post Ooh. Katnick got that shot right off the post. I think it went off the 
the right post. Was trying to tie the puck up. He's got it tied up and finally gets the whistle to stop the play. Well, Jeff Godet got a bit lucky on that play and the play before that. If Lindsay could have one time that shot, he would have drained it. He had a wide open net, but he had to stop it and then shoot it. Then right after that, the Buckaroos hit the post and well, Godet will say he covered his angles right, but he got a little lucky, I think. Buckaroos showing great control in the power play early. And they're dangerous when they get going there. It's uh, You can almost smell a goal when, it's, when they get in there like that. And they're still at it. They've still got 36 seconds left in this two-man advantage. They're setting up in there once again. Lindsay off the draw. Robertson has the puck for the Sockeyes. Behind the net, Davies has it. Davies to Lindsay. Or rather, that's uh, Ebner. He's out there looking for goal number three on the evening. Comes back to the point, Tom setting up, shoots it towards and it deflection and it goes out of play as it hits the meshing in behind Godet. What a great play by Tom to just shoot the puck right along the ice. Ebner saw it all the way, got a great deflection, just put it a little bit too high. This is a dangerous line for the Buckaroos. They got Ebner, Davies, and Lindsay out there. These guys are great hockey players. Here's that shot by Tom. He'll put it right along the ice. Watch Ebner. Nice deflection, but just a little too high. Great control by the Buckaroos. Still 17 seconds left in that two-man advantage. The faceoff comes just outside the line in front of the Buckaroos bench. Swanson against Coletta, and the Buckaroos have the puck. Tom gets it over there to Katnick. Katnick carrying it in. The pass and the drop pass. Got it. Turns it aside as he gets it with his shoulder. Five seconds left in the first penalty. They set up. There you hear the stick being banged. There's a shot. Got it. With makes a save. Sockeyes have one man back. 44 seconds left in the remaining penalty. Katnick with a shot. Godet turns it aside. McLean in there on defense with Robertson. Katnick drops it back. First shot saved there by Godet. And Swanson has the puck, and he just dumps it down the ice, killing some precious seconds off this penalty. 20 seconds now left as the both teams make full changes. And the Sockeyes did anyways. Swanson has gone off. That's Wust out there in five seconds left in the Sockeye penalty. Down the ice it goes. The Sockeyes are, have killed this man, two-man advantage. Well, Godet's got to feel pretty good. He had a shaky first period. He uh, tightened up late in the first, and then he had about five shots there in the last minute, and he stopped them all. He's got to be feeling a bit better about this hockey game. Myers tries to play the puck. It goes off the referee, unfortunately, and goes out of play. And the face-off will be just in front of our broadcast position, right on the Sockeye logo. There's Coy Myers for the Sockeyes, and he's been a mainstay at defense for them all season long. Myers has played 26 games. He's got six goals, 10 assists, 16 points. And he's seen the penalty box a bit, 74 minutes. Two minutes, 59 seconds gone. Second period, we're tied at two. Sockeyes have just killed a two-man advantage. And the Buckaroos had some pretty good chances on it, too. But it had to be sharp on a couple of the shots. Back come the Buckaroos. That's Ridgeway in there. He takes a hit. Being watched there, Sumners. And now Russell Brew after the puck. Doesn't get it, though. Sumners in there still, trying to be helped by Ridgeway. Puck tied up at skates. Ridgeway comes out, shoots off the post. Rebound in front. Puck comes all the way back there to Katnick. Katnick shot. Blocked. Not out. Katnick has it again. Blocked again. Crane with Plant. Plant gets it uh, down into the neutral zone. What a flurry of action there, Mark Patrick. That's post number two for Godet. He's been lucky twice. And here comes a delayed penalty against the Buckaroos. I didn't see what that's for. It's for holding here. I didn't see the actual infraction, but in any event, the Sockeyes are going to get their third power play opportunity of the game. Well, the Sockeyes could use this power play to really turn the tides. They just killed a two-man advantage for well over a minute. Now they've got their own chance to try and get on the power play and score a goal. This could be a, a huge if they can put one behind Bailey. That's Corey Dick, the uh, player getting the infraction. Maybe we'll see something here. I don't know if this is what this was. Here, this is there. Here's that shot off the post. That was on that, I think, the last part of that power play. The Buckaroos show great control. They just seem to have puck luck here tonight. 
the puck keeps bouncing right back to them, and the Sock guys are fighting every minute of it, it seems. And there's Robertson. He just fought the puck as well. Time of the call, 3.52. Holding the call, as we said, and Robertson has the puck. Somebody's lost a glove out there. Swanson down the left side with Overgaard and Ivan Usyk. A pass there for Ivan Usyk. Dennis moves in. Dennis is shot. Blocked in there a little bit by one of the Buckaroos players. Overgaard throws it over to Ivan Usyk. Ivan Usyk looking for someone to get it to. There's Swanson racing in. He got the shot away, but it was just a bit off the mark. Nice idea, though. Great pass by Ivan Usyk. With Overgaard tied up in there. Ivan Usyk turning with the puck, trying to get something going and take the lead for the first time in tonight's game. Ivan Usyk scores! There it is! Sockeyes lead 3-2. Great shift for Marion Ivanusik. He made that great pass right across, and he just kept hustling. He's right in front of the net again, had lots of time, and he just picked his spot. That's Ivanusik's 19th goal of the season, 37th point. Here's the replay. Ivanusik does a lot of this work himself. As you see him in the corner, passes it back to Overgaard. Now Overgaard will get it back to him. Ivanusik's got lots of time, puts it glove side low, burns Bailey, and look at this. Buckaroos had a two-man advantage. Sockeye's come back and score on their advantage. That's a Assisted big goal for Sockeye. Assisted by number 25, Jeff Overgaard. Here comes Ivan Usyk again. 435. He just got one. He's looking for number two. Ivan Usyk to the side of the net. Swanson has the puck. Behind the net, but the Buckaroos come up with the puck, and they'll bring it out to center. Ivan Usyk from Overgaard at 435. It's 3-2 Richmond. And remember, they trailed two to nothing at one point. Overgaard with Nakasuru. Across the line, Overgaard to Nakasuru. Oh, in the pass. Nakasuru couldn't get quite control it enough to get a good shot away. Overgaard's out there. He's probably going to have to get to the bench as his line mates have already got there. He heads for the bench now. Armstrong carries it in with Nakasuru. Armstrong takes a shot towards it, and Nakasuru just got ahead of the puck a little bit. Good effort there by number 21, Jesse Nakasuru. Across to Nakasuru again. Around the boards. Bowley at the near point here. Throws it towards the net. Yule with the puck coming off the boards. In behind the net. In front. Nakasuru got it on his backhand. Couldn't get a good shot. But Bailey still had to turn the shot that he did get there aside. Bowley shot through the crowd. And he got lost in skates and got a whistle. So we'll have a face-off, and there's some reaction there from the fans. Well, the Sock guys weren't, ha weren't happy with that whistle call. The puck never was frozen by Bailey. It was still loose. And you can see Armstrong get upset with the ref for blowing the whistle a little early. It's happened a few times tonight. Uh... Bowley, and this is his second good shot from the point. Dangerous shot when they're nice and low like that. A good deflection there, and you'll see it here if the replay runs long enough that he'll get another shot from the point. Too because bad. Jesse there couldn't have got a little bit more on that shot. It's tough. He got out of the back end and have a brush with it a bit. It's easy for us to always criticize the, ref criticize the referee's calls yeah. from up here, isn't it? It is. It's simple. <laughs> Quick decision that has to be made, and uh, well, they know that. Six minutes, 24 seconds gone in this second period. Sockeyes ahead 3-2, to two, that go-ahead goal by Ivan Usyk. And here's the go-ahead goal that we're talking about. He just had a lot of time, Ivan Usyk, to pick his spot. Knew exactly where he wanted to go, and he drained it. The Sockeyes look completely different here in the second period. They've been hitting. Every man on the Sockeyes has been hitting their, player, their check. It's been a, a total different story from the first period. Dennis just got a shot from the point. Now he throws a bit of a hit on number eight, Tar. Gets the puck and puts it into Howard. Back to Tar. Tar after the puck. Howard in front, and he's tied up there by number 24, David Martin. Now it comes just back to the point. Robertson keeps it in. Into the corner, Tar has the puck. Two Sockeyes collide. That's Tar. The puck is still in there for the Sockeyes. West has it. Centered across. Now out come the Buckaroos. But Dennis manages to put it back in. The stock guys seem to be regrouping a little bit better here as the second period goes on. 
completely different game here in the second period. It's been in the Buckaroos' end for the most part. Now Gaudet handles the puck behind the net. Robertson plays it off the boards to Jody Crane, out to Brendan West, manages to get it outside the line. Robertson plays it out to Jody Crane. Crane gets by number 10, Katnick, for the Buckaroos. Brew throws a hit in there. Russ Brew coming off the board, shoots! Oh, almost snuck it by. As Bailey had to be sharp. Brew has the puck again. Centers it across for Plant. Plant goes down, and there's no penalty there. The fans aren't happy about that one. Now Chris Gilfillan has the puck. Plays it ahead to Brew. Back into the neutral zone. Offside the call with eight minutes gone in the second period of play. Good shift for Russ Brew, another guy that's uh, been playing well since Jeff Crosley. He had a couple good chances in the Buckaroos end, and you'll see it here. Crane will get by his man, lose the puck, but Brew will eventually get the puck back. He makes the miss, he hit there, but he, he actually tried to hit him, missed it. Got the puck anyway, he's got a shot on that. A good try for Brew. Good hustle as well. And he'll get the puck back as well. Right there. A little bit of puck luck. He gets another shot towards the net. Ivanusa Gracie through a crowd. Taken down, he goes into the net. Penalty called. Will it be a penalty shot? No, it won't. I didn't see the full play. And it's not warranting a penalty shot, but there is a trip indicated. So the Sockeyes are going right back on the power play after scoring on their last opportunity. Great hustle by Marion Ivanusic. And it's the same player going back into the box that cost the Buckaroos that last goal in terms of being out, being the one that was in the box. That's Corey Dick. 8-11 the time of the penalty. Ivan Usyk, by the way, as we mentioned, and we can segue into the fact that he was in the All-Star game out at Abbotsford a week ago, and he won the, um, as I say that here, I believe he was a player of the game, as I start to say that. There's a, there's a shot. Two minutes for tripping. Time of the call, 8-11. Bully took a shot on net. It was actually a dumb shot. I'm sorry, Wade, but there was nobody in front of the net, and it was an easy clear for Bailey and the Buckaroos. Now the Buckaroos have got control on the Sockeyes power play. Start to walk in. I got, sorry about that, Mark. I got distracted. I have to look that up. I thought I had it on the sheet here that Ivan Uzik had won. If memory serves me correct. He was uh, a winner in the All-Star game of the competition or of the uh, player of the game for the for the South Division. But I'll have to look that up and uh, get back to that. How do I get myself into these binds? Ah, it happens. It happens. There's uh, Swanson. Ivan Uzik won a hit there, and they're going to call a penalty. I don't know what the penalty is. There's a goal. <laughs> but of course, they're calling it boarding. And I don't know, it's, um, the fans aren't happy about that one. Either is Swanson. Let's take a look here. We got a good shot at it right here. Ooh, two Sockeyes took him out. Ivan Usa against Swanson. So there it is, boarding the call. And Swanson is not happy with the call at all. It was questionable. He had his back turned, but... Sockeyes lead 3-2, 11-03 left. They were down 2 to nothing, Mark, and they came back. Here's that hit again. And their short power play, their fourth one of the game. They don't connect in that period. Here's the penalty. Boarding, time of the call, 8.57. Swanson for boarding, time of the call, 8.57. 8.57, the time of that penalty. So the teams are at even strength right now. Dennis moving in. Dennis shoots with a weak shot as it was blocked a little bit. Comes back, and out come the Buckaroos. That's Alan Franks carrying it to center. He's got Davies with him. Franks does a nice dipsy doodle. He worked over there by Dennis. Robertson tries to get the puck. Now the puck is thrown into the skates, and it, as a result, it's jammed along the boards. 31 seconds left in the Buckaroos penalty. Then they'll have a about a 40-second penalty, 46-second penalty, or power play rather. There is a look at the assistant coach Ryan Semenoff. There is Pete Martin and Ryan Semenoff, two of the assistants helping Grant Kerr over at the Buckaroos bench. And that's number 12, Alan Franks for the Buckaroos. Bust in there against Davies, and 
Mike West has been waved out in to take his place as place of Steve Howitt. To number 19, Davies wins it. It comes back to the point. Tom has it. Throws it into the corner for Davies. Davies and Dennis fighting for it in there. West to Howitt. Howitt plays it ahead to Neil Robertson. A little bit too far for him. Robertson has to leave his defensive position there to get it. It comes back to the point. Walking it in. Shoots. Oh, and it just whistles by the post to the goaltender's left. I'm surprised Robertson got that shot away. He got nailed by Katnick on the end boards. Buckaroos on a power play. They're third of the game. 0 for 2 thus far. As Dick comes out of the penalty box, and they have a 41-second power play to work with. Well, there's going to be a face-off in the Buckaroos zone. Talk to Crosley about this game, and is there any heated rivalries? Here's that shot by Robertson first. It just went wide. That just must have breezed the post. Talk to Crosley before the game about, um, about this rivalry between these two teams. They played six times this year. Both teams have won three. And I said, do you expect a rough game tonight? Is there is there players that, that aren't too happy with other players on the other side? And he said, no. He says, these games against the Buckaroos are pretty clean. They're pretty clean games. And so far, it's been that. Shot goes high. Oh, and Crane watching for the puck to come down as it was flipped in. is knocked down by Katnick. Man, that could have been a penalty on Katnick right there. Interference. Gil Fillon puts the puck back to the Buckaroos. Katnick, Crane trying to force Katnick, but Kat Katnick wins that one. Katnick comes it back and puts it in across the line. Gaudet leaves it there. McLean plays it up along the boards, picked up there by Tom, across the other side, centering pass, so they score! Wow. Right through the five hole, it's all tied at three apiece. Nice passing by Tom and Katnick, and I think that was number 20 who scored it, Lindsay. Beautiful goal, put it right through the five hole of Jeff Godet. Boy, that Katnick is all over the ice, and you just saw the tail end of it. Lindsay putting it right through the five hole of Godet. Love to see that replay again from the beginning. As the uh, Buckaroos tie this game up at three. This is a seesaw battle going back and forth. Here's the goal. Number 20, Jeff Lindsay, assisted by number 10, Phil Kananick, and by number four, Aaron Tom. Time of the power play goal, 10 -50. Goal scored by Lindsay. There was one assist who I didn't pick up, but Tom did get. Number 10 as we watch the play the other way. So Katnick and Tom picking up the assists on that third goal of the evening, and it's end-to-end -end action now. Power play goal, so the Buckaroos have scored one, as have the Sockeyes in tonight's action. Down the ice it goes. That will be icing on the Sockeyes. With 8 minutes, 30 seconds remaining, we've got a 3-3 tie here in the second period of Richmond's Mineroo Arena. The Sockeyes and the Buckaroos on Rogers 4 Sports coverage of the PIJHL. Mark Patrick and Mark Jones along with you. Got a little bit of give, give a lot of credit to Katnick for that goal. He had a great shift. He stole it from Crane once, and then he made the play to bring it up the ice to get it to Tom. Tom passed it back over to Katnick. Katnick set up Lindsay beautifully, and uh, the goal to tie this game up at three. Well, these two teams, first and third, Sockeyes in first, the Buckaroos in third. And, uh, of course, these two teams were, um, if you go to the end of the season last year, the Buckaroos were in first and the Sockeyes were in third, and who knows what will happen. There's still a number of games to go in this season. Here's a guy we haven't heard much of tonight, Steve Howitt. He's the leading scorer for the Sockeyes. He's got uh, 20 goals, 28 assists, 48 points, and he's kind of cooled off a bit lately for the Sockeyes. They need a guy like him to keep putting the puck in the net. And Howitt per participated in the uh, one of the, uh, the All-Star game at Abbotsford, as we started to talk about. He was in the... Uh, the hardest shot competition where they had a radar gun. we got to stop it so we can talk about this here as the offside's called. Steve Howitt came really close to winning it. He, uh, they had a radar gun placed behind the net in the intermission and had a, a competition. Uh, and uh, Howitt fired three shots, his top shot being fired at 124 kilometers an hour, just eight kilometers shy of winning, which went to Steve Reeves of Abbotsford. Steve Reeves firing a shot of 132 kilometers an hour. Wonder what kind of ticket he gets for that. Uh, what kind of fine uh, 
But he won the competition, and we'll try to run down those winners. Uh, if we have a chance here, there's a shot on Ed Bailey. Had to be close on that one. He's closed the pads. Robertson gets it through the, the uh, Davies. But managed to get the puck past him. 7.45 remaining second period as West is after the puck, tries to center it in front. Tar centers it. Bailey has to be alert and taps it aside. West behind the net, being tied up in there by number four, Aaron Tom. West has the puck still to Tar. Tar, a four-year veteran of this league. Out there on the forward line right now. The puck comes off. No one able to get it there as it came off the side of the net. Mike Ebner. And Dennis has the puck to Tar. Tar with no one there to get it to. He just plays it into the neutral zone as he takes a hit. They're starting to throw bodies out there. How it just tried to nail Dick. Missed him by an inch. There's a pass that went astray, and we've got an icing call. With just under seven minutes remaining in this second period. Well, 3 3 tied. Two very good hockey teams. Turning out to be a great hockey game. Remember, the Buckaroos won it all last year. The Pacific International Junior Hockey League against the Sockeyes. Sockeyes have had a better season this year than the Buckaroos, but the Buckaroos were without some key players. They've got them back now and looking to be the team they were last year. One team could uh, will come out of this uh, league at the end of the season as well. Overguard falls as he gets the pass. Great opportunity there. So to say one team will, will get a, will come out ahead and who knows who it'll be at this point. Obviously, both these teams hope it's their team, but we shall see. Right now, we're here in, still in regular season action. Of course, 3-3 three, three the score, second period here at Richmond Arena. Just six and a half minutes left in this game. Buckaroos led 2 to nothing early on. The Sockeyes tied it, went ahead early in the third period, in the second period, rather, and then the Buckaroos have tied it on a power play goal by Jeff Lindsay. Look at that chance there. Obergaard just lost an edge and then he couldn't regain it. Had a good chance here, though. Obergaard had a slow start this year, along with Ivan Usyk, and he's really picked it up of late. McLean fires it in there. Bailey turns it aside. Side. There it is. It's touched. So now we have some rough stuff after the whistle. Brew mixing it up there with number two, Corey Dick, right in front of the Buckaroos bench. Interesting statistic on the Sockeyes. They have not lost, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, they have not lost two games in a row back to back this year. And if I can tell you that momentarily here. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the way it is. The Sockeyes have not had a serious slump yet this season. They have not done that. And that's almost scary in a way. I mean, you think you're 10 games before you go into the playoffs. You haven't really seen that slump. You've got to be scared that it's going to happen at the wrong time. And that's just before the playoffs. And they hope it doesn't happen now exactly. Uh, but you're right. Um, they've only lost six games. Six games in the regular season. Three of them against Poco, but they're all spread out. One in September, two in November, two in December, and one early in January here. The loss is three to Poco, including the only loss here at home. One to Abbotsford, one to Ridge, or rather two to Ridge Meadows. Six to five, and four to one. Both those losses, of course, being in Ridge Meadows. Mm -hmm. I talked to Crossley about that in the intermission, about being worried about that slump coming. I talked to him about that before the game, and he said he is a bit... But at the same time, he said, no, he's not. He's got a good bunch of players, and they want it bad this year, the Sockeyes. They're going for it. They're not going to do any of this slump stuff. Got a couple other housekeeping things we should do here in the next break, including some scoring changes, which I don't think we mentioned at the beginning of the second period here. We'll get to those in the next break. Davies in there. West has a puck, and we have a penalty indicated holding the call. It's going to go against Coy Myers, and I don't think he's too happy about that one, but he's not going to have much of a say in that matter. He is heading to the box for two minutes. 
And the Buckaroos have a chance, if they can make this power play work, to go ahead. Well, the 27-year-old, Kerry Gregory, our head ref tonight, has decided to pull out the whistle and start make some, making some calls. And the Sockeyes are not too happy about it. Captain Wade Bowley's out there. Just looking here, the they indicate the gate has opened. I think there may be a misconduct penalty to the um, to the sockeyes, as um, the referee um, seemed to indicate something right after that one penalty was indicated. He seemed to point towards the bench, Kerry Gregory, the referee, and I think there is another penalty indicated. We got one on the board. Looks like uh, Roddy Armstrong's going to come over and serve it too. Well, Jeff Jeff Cross is having quite a discussion. If we take a look at the Richmond bench here, Jeff Cross is having a discussion there with. Refer the referee, and he's not sending anybody over there right now. Now he is. Now Swanson's going over. No, he's going out, but the gate is still open, so I don't know what's going on here. They got four guys out there. Now oh, there goes Crane. Okay, so we've got. Um, there is another guy going off, so there's going to be another penalty. So the fans, as yeah. we've said many times tonight, they are not happy with this, and they're going to be a little bit more vocal tonight. And. Uh, Obviously, we'll pick up and see what this is all about, but maybe a 10-minute misconduct. There's nothing on the board, so uh, well, yeah, they've still got four players out there, so uh, mm -hmm. it's just a 10-minute. We'll see what happens here. Richmond penalties to number at, three, here Cole it is. Myers. Two minutes for roughing and a 10-minute misconduct. Penalty yeah, being called called by number 10, Jody Crane. Looks like Myers the got the 10-minute misconduct. Sockeye is shorthanded. Buckaroo's back on the power play. They've got one goal tonight on the power play. They're the third goal of the evening that tied it up here in this second period. As they set up the point of the shot, Godet turns it aside. The Buckaroos have got their big guys out there. Davies from behind the net setting up. He was out for a while this season, but he's back now. And the Sockeyes know it. He's been in on two goals tonight. Watch for Katnick and Tom to be setting up this power play. They'll be back at the point. Swanson gets the puck. He's got Plon with him. Swanson, save there, the shot. To Plon. Oh, great chance. As Plon almost put it in with a shorthanded goal. What a great opportunity there for Brad Swanson and Dan Plon. Swanson. Robert, go so, ahead, Mark. Sorry, Mark. Swanson did the right thing. He just buried his head and just let it rip. Got the puck back, made a nice pass to Plant. Plant just missed the net. Great opportunity for the Sockeye shorthanded. Swanson's got one assist on that. That's one of the changes. He got one assist on that second goal. For the Sockeye's now centered across. And Ebner had a great chance for his hat-trick goal right there. Now down the ice it goes. Sockeye's killing this penalty. 30 seconds now left. They've killed a minute and a half in this penalty. Putting some pressure on there. Wust is in there. But they get the puck out to Riley Berth. Across ice to Jeff Lindsay. Lindsay drops it back and Howitt plays it out and tries to get away. Wust is out there putting pressure on Bailey. Wust almost manages to get the puck away from Ryan Reed with seven seconds left in the Sockeyes penalty. Berth across the line. And a couple players go down. The Buckaroos off the power play, but still putting the pressure on. Howitt has the puck, doesn't know where, where it is as he blocks it. Setting up in front, the Buckaroos. West has to watch it there as he got tied up with the Buckaroos player. Sockeye's under pressure, the shot towards the net. And it's turned aside as there's players all over the ice. Now there's a play stoppage. It's down to our right, couldn't quite see it. I think the puck got jammed in along the boards. Great play by Steve Howitt. We probably won't get a chance to see this, but as the Sockeye penalty was coming to an end, the Buckaroo defenseman had one last chance to get a shot, and Howitt blocked it. Beautiful block. Here's the shot by Swanson, and then the pass to Plant. Plant just deflected it wide of the net. But Howitt made a great block. It was a last chance effort for the Buckaroos to score while they had five against four, and Howitt just dived in front of the puck and, and blocked the shot. Great play by Howitt. Both power plays now one for four in the evening by our unofficial count. Both goals on the power play for the two teams coming in this third, second period. As two number sixes collide in there along the boards. 
Number six, Armstrong gets it back to Anakasur in front. Oh, you they score! Rob Yule, 4-3, Sockeyes. Well, kind of a scrambly goal, but Sockeyes will take it. Yule was in front of the net. Again, Sockeyes were just where they're supposed to be. Yule was right in front, and he put it right upstairs. The puck will move towards the front of the net, and Yule just has a chance to put it upstairs, and he does. Bailey's down on the ice. Here's another look at it. Almost like the old line the Canucks had, hack, whack, and smack, and that's basically yeah. what they did. Used to be the Smeal, Bozak, that's and I right. can't remember who the other guy was on that line, but there it is. Here's the call on the goal. By number 26, Rob Yule. Assisted by number 21, Jesse Nakatsuru. And by number six, Ronnie Armstrong. Time of the goal. Well, Yule 17, had two 12. chances in his second one. He made no mistake, put it right upstairs. Yule from Nakasur and Armstrong at about 17.21. I couldn't get the official time on that. Another shot in front, Bailey. Rebound. Oh, what a chance there for the Sockeyes to make it 5-3 to three as Overgaard just couldn't quite get to it and Bailey got the glove on it. That was a, that's a huge goal for the Sockeyes. They've killed off, well, they killed off the, uh, the, the couple penalties and then they come down the ice and Ewell just kept at it and manages to get get the go-ahead goal for the Sockeyes with 2.13 now left in the second period and the face-off to the right of Bailey. Keep an eye on Brad Bailey. He looks like he might have injured his left leg. He's been skating around out there trying to shake it off. So just keep an eye on him. He might be slightly injured. I just caught a glimpse of that too. Well, we will watch and see. I hope it's nothing serious. Swanson in there putting pressure on Swanson. Gets the puck. With Ivan Usyk and Overgaard out there. Ivan Usyk misses the puck. Back come the Buckaroos. Down by one. Centering pass there, and should they score? That's Lindsay again. That's his it's second. It's all tied again. It's tied at four. The Buckaroos have tied it up. Well, again, this is this is kind of starting to turn out to be a a scoring fest. Lindsay was wide open. Again, it seems like a lot of the players, when they score tonight, on both sides have been wide open. Lindsay had a great amount of time to uh, take a shot, and he just buried it and got it. Really, I hate saying this, didn't have a chance. He, of course he had a chance, but Lindsay was wide open. This kid could score. He buried it. Well, just earlier to that, uh, there was uh, just, as I play, um, develop, there was uh, one Buckaroo player, I believe it was number eight. Here, we'll get the call here. Lindsay, assisted by number seven, Ryan Reed, and by number eight, Riley Berth. Time of the goal, 18-17. I don't know if you picked that up. Oh, I, I'm, I apologize. Uh, we couldn't pick it up. Jeff Lindsay was the goal scorer. Uh, that's from what I picked up here. We'll have to get it. It's tied at four in any event. Might have been Ebner and uh, Riley Burke. There's a penalty coming up, and it's to the Buckaroos. What I started to say about that, that play was there was three Sockeyes on one Buckaroo player, and that, all, that goal developed after that Buckaroo player. It might have been number eight. Uh, Berth, yeah. he um, managed to fight through them and get the puck back, and they were able to get it past Godet. But that was a great effort. I mean, one against three, and you win the battle, basically. That's, uh, that was a great effort on the part of that Buckaroos player. But now they got a penalty to kill off as uh, the Buckaroos are shorthanded for the fifth time in tonight's game. Scott guys have scored once tonight in the power play. They'd love to uh, get one here late in the second period. Only a minute 12 left. And they've got the big guys out there. Brendan Wust. Overguard, and that's uh, Howitt on the right side with Robertson and Dennis at the point. Let's see if we can get the penalty here in a moment. They're setting up. One remaining in the second period. Tied Port up the front. penalty to number five, Brian Youngson. Two minutes for hooking. Time hooking the, call, the time. 1848. At 18:48. Dennis gets the puck, plays it over to Lust. Lust looking. They're moving the sticks around. Plays it across to Robertson. Robertson moving in the centering pass. Oh, what a chance. As the puck almost got past Bailey, and the players helped him out. West in there. Centering across. Oh, how it couldn't get it. 30 seconds left in the period. Robertson moving in. Centering pass. Doesn't get through. Robertson gets it there. Another shot. Overguard. 
Oh, and it goes back and back come the Buckaroos, two on one. Coletta with Lindsay. The Lindsay couldn't get it there. And back comes Overgaard. Ten seconds left in the period. Overgaard with Howitt. Across the line, a shot. Rebound in front, and it's cleared out. And that is going to do it for the second period as it comes down. Garnett handles it. There's the buzzer in the second period of tonight's game. Oh, what a period. A back and forth period. What was it? Was it two to nothing? No, two to two after one. It's now four to four. It's pretty even. But again, like Mark, we've got to stress in this, the, the goals that have been scored, the goal scorers have had a lot of time to pick where they want to put that puck. A lot of time. And I bet both coaches are saying, you've got to watch our men. You've got to watch your men. It's just too much time for the goal scorers to get a shot away. And for, the, and for those that are, that are wondering, Alma, I mean, we, we say what a game because, I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, we've definitely seen higher scoring games, but just what a what a swing in emotions, you know, I mean, for the fans and, and um, you know, you, you, one, one minute the, the team is up and then the other minute the team is down. And I mean, we've seen leads disappear and just as quickly as their game. So it um, should be an interesting third period. Look at this flurry here. I think this is one of the... This is that two-on-one where Lindsay had a chance to, to bury it, but he just couldn't get his stick on that high pass. There's been a couple of those a similar plays like that tonight, I think, for both teams. And uh, who knows, it's the last goal wins, uh, particularly tonight. Uh, uh, it seems 4-4 um, the score. The Sockeyes are on a power play, and they still have 48 seconds left in it. And... Um, should be an interesting third period. Well, it's, it's funny, too, because both of these teams are good defensive teams. Brad Bailey's a great goalie for the Buckaroos. Uh, Gaudette for the Sockeyes. Both teams are low in averages. The Sockeyes only average about 3.3 goals against the game. The Buckaroos, 3.8. They've got four already. We've still got 20 minutes left in, in this game. We just took a look at Rob Ewell and that whole play there that uh, made it 4-3. to three. That, that goal, that... Um you know, you, that's just what we're talking about there. It, I'm sure it gives the team such a lift to get that goal. And then right away, back they come, you know, um, just minutes later. And uh, both teams have been doing that jostling back and forth. And it's, it's great to see, like you said, a hack swack. What was it? Hack, hack whack and smack. Hack, well, yeah, that, that kind of a line. It's a great, it's great. To see. Here it is again. Look at this. Nakasura and Armstrong. Armstrong gets it to Nakasura. And Yule gets one or two tries at it and then buries it on the top shelf. And Bailey, I think, was a little bit upset with himself there. I wonder if Bailey uh, injured himself, if he was injured, if he injured himself there. Because he, he seemed have. to be down. Yep. Um, and it looked more than just the disappointment of the goal getting it. He may have been in a bit of pain. So we'll have to watch that. We hope he's not uh, seriously injured because the uh, not to take anything away from their their other goalie, Chad Johnson, but Brad Bailey, with he's third in the overall league um Goaltending with 3.53 uh, goals against average and 88.7 save percentage. And um, we'll have to see what happens in this third period. As we take a look at some of the fans here at Richmond's Minaru Arena. As we go to the intermission here, it's Richmond and Port Coquitlam tied at four here at Richmond's Minaru Arena. The PIJHL and Rogers four will return with the third period in just a moment. Welcome back to Richmond's Mineroo Arena here. It's time for the game scoring summary after 40 minutes. The Buckaroos got on the board here with a minute 47 seconds in and a goal by Mike Ebner. He was followed up eight at 8.56 by another goal by the same Mike Ebner from Davies. Both those goals, it was two to nothing for the Buckaroos. The Sockeyes got on the board finally at 17.31. A goal by Jody Crane tipped in on a two on one from Plant and Gil Fillin. And then 30 seconds later, Jeff Overgaard scored from Brad Swanson and Ivan Usyk. It was all tied at two. Sockeyes went ahead three to two at 4.35 of the second period. As we take a look there at Yule's goal, that was the Sockeyes' fourth goal of the game. Just before that, the Buckaroos scored, and that goal was by Jeff Lindsay. You just saw Yule's goal. It was four to three, and the Buckaroos added one more. That again by Jeff Lindsay. And that's where it stands right now, 4-4. Four, so four. it gives you a bit of a picture if you're just joining us here at Richmond's Mineral Arena. I'm Mark Jones along with Mark Patrick and the Rogers 4 crew. We're glad to have you with us as the Sockeyes go into this period. And, of course, uh, the Buckaroos are shorthanded. So the Sockeyes are on a power play for 48 seconds. Um, while we have a moment here, 
We'll just talk about a couple other things. The saves after two periods. Jeff Godet's made 15 saves for the Sockeyes. Brad Bailey for the Buckaroos has made 19. And we see Brad is still in there, and that's good to see, as there was some concern about an injury. Sockeyes have got a great chance here to get back ahead of the Buckaroos. They're on the power play. they got a good 45 seconds left here. See if they can make something happen. From our account, their fifth power play opportunity of the game. As we say, it carries over from this last period. Just 32 seconds left in it now. But they're in there forcing it. A great game here at Richmond Spinner Arena. Bully on the point. Plays it in behind the net to Ivan Usyk. And back come the Buckaroos. Out to center. That shot is into the meshing and out of play by Mark Coletta. Mark, we started to talk about the um, the All-Star game that took place last week, and I got myself into a corner started talking about Marion Ivanusic. Mm -hmm. There was a star of the game from each team. Rob Marion was on the North Division from Ridge Meadows right. Flames. He was the game player of the game for the North Side. Marion Ivanusic, with one goal in the game, was the South Division player. Also um, in on the honors and winning a couple things with, during the uh, skills competition, Sean Tarr shared the honors with... Um, one of the Abbotsford players, Kevin Strohmeyer, they were both, they were dual winners on the uh, rapid fire shooting. So that's, uh, those are some of the winners. You can take a look at that. And as the penalty is now over, and the puck comes out of play just to our broadcast right here. And we have a stoppage in play with 57 seconds gone in this third period. Ryan Dawes uh, got to play in that All-Star game. I don't. I didn't get a chance to look at this before the game. We just got these uh, stats from the All-Star game before the game. Hadn't a chance to look at it, but uh, Dawes was in that game. He shared with Mike Buss, who's uh, from Abbotsford. And they've got down here that Mike Buss was the winner. I don't know what they did, though, so. Yeah, he was uh, based on the skills competition. They had the shots against the two goalies, and uh, Mike Buss did win that at the end of the, uh, of the competition. So good work on his part, the Abbotsford goaltender. Steve Howitt in there setting up, plays it back to Robertson, get too hard and goes down the ice. Godet comes out to play the puck. This is, I think, probably the closest game we've seen between these two teams this season. I uh, stand corrected. There's a great chance. Buckaroos trying to take the lead there and a great opportunity to do so. Robertson with the puck, plays it to Armstrong and gets it out. We'll have a three-star competition at the end of the game, of course. Um, as always, that's quite a bottleneck, too, for the Sockeye players. Sockeye players pick the stars during Sockeye home games. will get points depending where they're the star position. And the leader will win at the end of the season a trophy. Brew shot off the mark just a little bit. Russell Brew got into that competition last week with a second star. In a 4-3 to three win over the Seattle Northwest Americans right here at Mineru Arena. There's a rocket of a shot down the ice, and that's going to be icing on the Buckaroos. 2-13 gone in this third period. I think it'll be wise to just wait, like, right near the end of this game to pick the stars. The Sockeyes are a third-period hockey team. There's been so many times this year where the Sockeyes bury three or four goals in the third period. I wouldn't doubt it if it happened tonight. Sockeyes play hard in the third, and they seem to just start putting the puck between the pipes. You could be right. A crane is in there on the faceoff. Gets it back to Gilfield and the shot through a crowd. And oh, I don't think anybody saw that, including the goaltender Bailey. Plant after the puck, and that one's. I thought it was out of play, but no, it just comes outside in the neutral zone. Back to Gilfillan. Chris Gilfillan. Puck played ahead and into the Buckaroo zone, carried out there by David Martin. Pass ahead, racing after it is Lindsay. And Godet turns it aside. Godet knows this Buckaroo's team well, him and. Now, overage player Charlie Kasky with the tandem in the goals in the net for the Sockeyes last year through the playoffs and, of course, in that league final series that went to seven games with the Buckaroos coming out the winner at the end. Ivan Usyk racing after the puck. Down the ice it goes, back into the Richmond zone. Well, both teams here are scared to make a mistake. At least that's what it looks like. They're just feeling each other out. Next goal could be the winner. Good Ivan Usyk there after the puck. Overgaard gets back 
defending there, put back into the Buckaroo zone. Nice move by Overgaard to miss that hit. All the action's in the neutral zone right here. It's yeah. great for us. It's right in front of us here. Look at that. Ivan Usa gets bumped there. Now Tar puts it in. Three and a half minutes gone, third period. We're tied at four. Richmond and Port Coquitlam at Richmond's Minaru Arena. Overgaard can't quite control the puck. Now it's flipped in there by Swanson. Bailey handles it. Doesn't see his man coming in. Overgaard right behind the net there. And back come the Buckaroos. Alan Franks, one man to beat. Franks moving it on Godet. And Bowley comes back. Franks goes down, but no penalty there as he just took a bit of a spill. Back and forth we go. Franks again. Here he comes with Ebner. Ebner looking for his hat trick goal. And the Sockeyes tied up, having trouble with it. Ebner after the puck. Ebner gets it over to Franks. Franks with the puck. Where is it? Behind the net. Alan Franks centering it. Blocked there. Swanson, or rather Brendan West has it. Franks has it again with a shot. But it doesn't know where it is. Oh, oh, somehow. He got lucky there, Mark. Franks having trouble. The nobody seems to know where the puck is. It's right there. There it is. They move it down the ice. They're going to try to call that icing. It's waved off. This is a very important game for both teams, and you can see it. It's tied at four, third period. No one wants to make a big mistake, so you're seeing a lot of center ice hockey. That was our first little bit of action in one end for a, a period of time. There's a shot, got in with the save. Back to the point, another shot. Rebounded for, where's the puck? It's on the line. Oh, they go to put it over the net. What action? Nakasuru. Ryan Reed had a great chance in front. He didn't get all of it, that all of on, he didn't get as much on it as he wanted to. Missed the wide open net, put it right over top. This starts to have a little bit of a feeling of a playoff game. Yeah, it I mean, does. almost in this third period is starting with some of that intensity almost. That action right there, boy, oh boy. Good action. Sitting at home watching this one. Come on down to the next Sockeyes home game or any of the games around the PIJHL. It's great action here. Great entertainment. And if you do come out, you might want to come a bit early. They're filling up this arena. Plant with a shot over the net. As Yule was in racing in there, he's got one goal tonight already. Nakasuru tries to throw a check but misses his man. 6-10, gone third period, 4-4 tie. We've gone probably four minutes without a stoppage in play here. End-to-end -end action. Through, centering it. Yule try to get it there. Out to Gil Fillin, and Gil Fillin puts it to Plant. Tried to fire it back in and got caught up in Plant's equipment. Bailey likes to come out and handle the puck as he does there and just gets it by Brew. Brew's crashing and banging out there. McLean puts it back in. Got it. Plays it up and out into the neutral zone. Swanson leaves the puck there for Ivan Usyk. Ivan Usyk across the line. Got ahead of him. Now he's got it back momentarily. The puck's along the boards. Gil Fillin in a bit of trouble controlling it. The Sockeyes trying to keep it in, and they're managing to do that. Maybe not controlling it that much, but they're keeping the puck in there anyways. Overguard. They're trying to tie the puck up. Comes loose. Gets by one Sockeye player, Swanson. Now the Buckaroos play it ahead. Like you say, uh, Mark, there's non-stop action. These guys are going to get tired if they don't get a change. I don't know how long they've been out there. Ivan Usyk. But it's still very careful hockey. No one's really taking any serious chances, and you can really see that. You can see. Uh, well, look out here. There's the Buckaroos. Where's the puck? And the, we lose sight of it there. Got it. to the corner. Godet was there. He made that save. Big, big save by Godet to keep the Sockeyes in a tie hockey game. Ivanusek across the line. Centering pass. They score! Beautiful goal by Swanson. Grant Swanson, 5-4, Sockeyes. Wow, there we go. Break that end-to-end -end hockey with no whistle. Beautiful pass by Ivanusek. He waited just 
just the right amount of time. Watch Avenues to get around the defenseman, put it to Swanson, and Swanson makes no mistake. Big, big goal for Brad Swanson. It's 5-4. to four. That goal coming at 7.58. I love how Ivan Usyk waited for the defenseman to make a move. The defenseman went down. Ivan Usyk went just around him and fed Swanson perfectly. Swanson buried it. Great goal. Great setup by Ivan Usyk. Here they come again. Look how God it takes a save Brad there. Brad Swanson. Here's the goal. We'll pick Assisted it up here. by number 18, Marian Ivan Usyk. And by number 17, Wade Bowley. Bowley gets an assist on that, Time too. The, the Sockeyes are going for it here. 7.58, Swanson from Ivan Usyk and Bowley, 5-4 Richmond. That is Swanson's 12th goal of the season. Ivan Usyk's having a nice night as well. And Ivan Usyk's got... Uh, three, three points. Has he got three? One, two, hey, you're right. You're, good work there, Patrick. <laughs> One goal, two assists for Ivan Usyk. And the Buckaroos find themselves down by one, but the Sockeyes better not take it for granted as this team has battled back, and there's an icing call. Lots of time left on the clock, 11.07. So that's a nice goal by Brad Swanson for the Sockeyes. Just to make you realize how important this hockey game is tonight, Port Coquitlam is sitting in third place right now. They've played 30 games, which is one less than the Sockeyes. They've got 39 points. If they could win tonight, they would be eight points behind the Sockeyes with still one game in hand, which means they could move six points behind. This is all positioning for the playoffs. The Buckaroos have... Have got a very. This is a very important game for both teams, but especially for the Buckaroos. They're looking for positioning. They need a win tonight. There's only 10 games left. And we should just clarify one thing: um, that the points that it is 39 points is what we have, and it's not um, not to, to split hairs. But there was. Uh, we'll have to give just mention one thing right. just for for viewers at home. And we'll get to that in a moment. Got it trapped out of that, and boy, he took the long way around, and almost the Buckaroos have got the had a great chance at an open net. Boy, oh boy, Sockeyes under some pressure as the Buckaroos come back. Ryan Reed skating through. Now they get it down the ice as the Sockeyes clear it out. Icing is indicated and icing is called on the Buckaroos or on the Sockeyes. Let's just talk about it here. Uh, basically what's happened is there was a game the other night between the Buckaroos and the, and the Pilots and the, the Buckaroos did win the game. But unfortunately, there was an ineligible player in the game. So as it stands, they were credited two points to bring them to the, to the for the win and bring them to the 39 points. As it stands right now, there's going to be a decision at a, at a league meeting the end of January. The points right now have not been credited to anyone. So really, right. Port Coquitlam is sitting um, with just the 18 wins and one tie, so 37 points right. just to split hairs and just for the record on that. But that's, uh, that's an unfortunate situation, but that's what happened. Uh, an ineligible player. So the points haven't gone to anybody yet. They haven't gone to Abbotsford. They're not there to Port Coquitlam because of the ineligible player. And we talked to Grant Kerr, the head coach of the Buckaroos, before the game about this topic, and he was not a happy camper about this situation. York, the player that uh, is supposedly ineligible, had four assists that night, four points. And they'll have to see what's going to happen um, well, a number of things. All that will be decided uh, at the at the meeting on the uh, on the 31st of January. Back to action here. Five to four. The score for the Sockeyes. Swanson's got the go-ahead goal, and here comes that line again. Ivan Usyk with Swanson and Overgaard. Overgaard fighting through there. That line has been on, in on three of the Sockeyes' five goals tonight in one form or another, the Overgaard, Swanson, and uh, Ivan Usyk line. So. Dangerous play there by Aaron Thom just a second ago. He brought it right up the middle, and he got stopped. Dangerous play, especially when you're behind by a goal. Icing waved off, so Godhead leaves it there. He'll fill in with, to McLean, to Tar. Blind pass, Tar gets it back, Tar. Coming in with Wust. Wust with the shot. Oh, the rebound there is a nice save by Brad Bailey. And the Sockeyes run a line change, so they had nobody there to get that rebound. And the puck gets past one player. Three on one. Save there by Godet on the great shot there by Jamie Lowe, number 21. Puck bouncing to get the shot away as Youngson managed to keep it onside long enough to get a shot away. Yeah. 
Now Steve Howitt across to West. West to Howitt. Howitt oh, gets the shot away and just a little bit off the mark. Tar plays it behind the net. West there. Howitt on the doorstep. Howitt couldn't get much on it. They're still fighting for it. Steve Howitt has gone almost two and a half periods, actually just over two and a half periods without a point tonight. And back come the Buckaroos. That's Mike Ebner. Ebner dodges a check. These are there for Franks. Played into the corner. Back to the point. No one there. Corey Dick with the puck. Out on defense with Phil Katnick. Buckaroos have got to start taking some shots. They've got to start peppering Godet if they're going to get a goal in this third period. they got to do that quick. Only Yule. eight minutes left. Sorry, Mark. Sorry. <laughs> I should say sorry to you. I was just going to say Yule cutting in there, but that was there. I agree. It's... Um, they're talking about the Buckaroos taking some chances, and uh, they may have to do that. I mean, time is not of an essence yet, as the saying goes, but with 8.09 left on the clock, it will soon be a face-off in the Buckaroos zone. With the only down by one, they're going to be pressing to just tie this one up again, and who knows what will happen. We could still see overtime here tonight. You're going to see a lot more of Mike Ebner, Mark Davies, and Jeff Lindsay in these uh, next eight minutes. This is their top line. This will be a big test for the Sockeyes, too, to see what they can do with his lead against uh, against the Buckaroos. Drop pass. There's a shot. And the rebound in front. Got it in the save. The own puck goes off the side of the net outside. And Godhead is making the save when he's got to. Big time goaltending. Robertson cutting in. Poke check there by Corey Dick. Nice work there by the Buckaroos defenseman. Davies in there to help him out. Plays it ahead there to Mike Ebner. Lead pass for Franks. Alan Franks in there alone. Now he's got some help with Ebner joining him. Yule takes, takes him in along the boards there. And we have a stoppage in play. I think this is the part of the game where we're going to see the, how good the Sockeyes defense is. It always seems this way. The Sockeyes, I don't know, they seem like they flirt with danger. They, Like the beginning, the first period, they didn't look like they had a defense, but they really do. The Sockeyes have got a great defensive club, and you're seeing that now. In this third period, the... Buckaroos have not had many great quality chances on Gaudet. They've had a couple, but not a lot, and that's because of the Sockeye defense. The shot blocked there by Jody Crane, and he does that well, very well. And you'll, as he blocks that shot, great opportunity there for the Buckaroos. you got to love that in a player. Jody Crane just gets his whole body in front of the puck. He says, I don't care if this is going to hurt. I'm playing for my team. Nice block by Crane. Sockeye's in a bit of trouble now. They clear it out as Dan Plon clears it out. Seven minutes exactly remaining in this third period. Five to four. A nice little flip pass Ooh. in there as number seven gets taken along the board. That's Ryan Reed for the Buckaroos. Good hit by Jody Crane. He almost put him right over the board. A little bit more hitting. Brew gets it to Plant. Plant goes down a little bit as he's... Interfered with a little bit there. Sockeyes make a full change. Swanson out there again with Overgaard and Ivan Usyk. Just in time for the Buckaroos to clump, come out of their zone. Overgaard throws a hit. Puck sitting there. Put back into the Richmond zone. Cleared out into the neutral zone. Three Buckaroos back there to get the puck. David Martin plays it ahead there for Shane Summers. Swanson has it. Just flips it into the Buckaroo zone. And watch the Sockeyes to start doing that now. A lot of dump and chase. They're going to get. They're going to gain center ice and dump it in. Ivan Usyk turning with it, puts it into the corner to Swanson. Swanson puts it out, and after it, there is Wade Boldy. You know, that works for the Sockeye's advantage. That puck that went all the way back, it's just a great way to waste some more time. Bowley said, I don't mind. I'll just skate this back and then dump it back in. And he did just that. Overguard goes down there. He got tied up. Buckaroos fighting for the puck. Summers gets it ahead there to Coletta. Coletta across the line, moving through the defense. Drop pass there, got it. And then it goes off. The Buckaroos player lands up in the net. Well, Unfortunately, see, that does not count yeah, as a that's, goal. That's not what you want to do, guys. You need the little black disc in the net. Here's that replay as he went hard to the net, Coletta. And then he got, well, he got tripped up by Myers, actually. 
doesn't really matter though. He didn't have a puck. Well, a good crowd on hand tonight, Mark. Seems like as the season goes on, more and more people are coming out to the arena. Great place to be on a Thursday night. A lot of fun, a lot of action. 5.22 left. And as the game, oh, we don't even want to mention that the game is over, but I just did. So uh, there we say, uh, the game isn't over. It's 5-4, but I say as we approach the end of the game, uh, one way or the other, it's going to be nearing the end. Uh, we're going to have to look at these three stars as you've got the duty of picking those. So we'll, a friendly reminder on that. And as we, you, move, we move along, <laughs> hey, it's not me. It's those, they'll want the three stars and we'll have to give them to them. So Neil Robertson has the puck. Puck goes down the ice. Icing could be called here, and it's going to be on the Sockeyes. So a key faceoff back in the Buckaroo zone, or in the Sockeye zone, the Buckaroos get the opportunity to tie this game up. And with their, some of their firepower out there, you know it's a real possibility. Wasp will take the faceoff for the Sockeyes. It looks like he's going to go up against Mark Davies. Davies, who missed a good part of this season earlier on due to... Um, well, he was injured there, and he was out because of that. I think he's only been back about a half dozen games, but they're glad to have him back as the captain. Bailey comes out to play the puck. Four minutes, 45 seconds remaining third period. Five to four, Richmond. On a go-ahead goal by Brad Swanson at the 7.58 mark of this third period, and the puck is out of play. Well, the Buckaroos have got to start getting that puck into the Sockeyes' end and then controlling it. They haven't been able to do that. The Sockeyes have, have uh, been able to get the puck. Once the Buckaroos clear it in, they just bring it right back out. And the Buckaroos have got to control the puck like they did in the first period. They were all over the Sockeyes. Right when the Sockeyes got the puck, they would be right on them. And they've got to do that here in the last four and a half minutes if they want to tie this game up. And another puck, uh, well, I think they thought it was out of play. I may have hit something. The play is whistled down. There's a look at Clint McLean. He's a big, tough-looking defenseman. He was with the Coquitlam Warriors, now the defunct Coquitlam Warriors of the PIJHL, and he was on that team that beat Richmond 3 to nothing in three games. Three games uh, to nothing in 1993, and then went on and won the provincial championship. One year after these same Sockeyes won it, they won the provincial championship right here at Richmond Arena, and they're looking to try to do it all again. But there's a long road between now and that. Just one more step. Plant. You can be sure the Buckaroos and several other teams will have something to say about the Sockeyes before that, uh, before the playoffs and during the playoffs. Three and a half minutes, 3.32 to be exact, remaining in this third period. This is PIJHL action from Richmond Mineroo's Mineroo Arena. Mark Jones and Mark Patrick and the Rogers 4 crew along with you. Glad to have you with you. I can't even say it anymore here, Patrick. <laughs> Glad to have you with us. Here's a look at that shot. Gaudet's looked good. I've been really impressed with him in the last part of this hockey game. A long shot from inside the blue line, but still he looks sharp, looks confident. I think he's become a little bit more confident as the game has gone on. Uh, could maybe, not to second guess the goaltender, but maybe on a couple of the early goals, possibly uh, you wonder if it was, if it was, you know, if he was at his top notch on well, it. Well, Crosley said before the game too that Gaudet is not where he was last year. And Godet is a number one goaltender. Uh, it's going to take him some time. He's only played six games this year. It'll take him some time to get back into the rhythm. Godet played this game as well as the game in Seattle just this past Sunday, their last game, a 5-2 to two win for the Sockeyes. Godet makes a save on the, off the faceoff. Ryan Daw is the backup, the all-star goalie for the Sockeyes. Ivan Usyk's shot, the save by Mr. Brad Bailey. And nicely done by him as he keeps the score at 5-4. to four. 
Bailey also an all-star goalie. The, the tandem from last year, Bailey and Malossi. Malossi now with Ridge Meadows, but both were with the Buckaroos last year. And there, Mr. Bailey makes a save right here. Great work by Ivanusic. He's been the difference in this hockey game. He's got a goal and two assists, and he's added a spark here in the third period. Ivanusic, great move on the defenseman and a nice shot. Bailey with a good save. Well, time is running out here for the Buckaroos. Rob Ewell in there for the faceoff, off the faceoff. Katnick has the puck. Behind the net. And the puck is played into the sockeye zone. We'll watch, it's gonna be a little bit early just yet, but we'll see what happens as this game takes down. The Buckaroos are unable to score, we'll watch for Bailey to go to the bench, but they've still got some time here. Two and a half minutes, just over two and a half minutes remaining. In this third period, Coy Myers carries it out with Nakasuro and Armstrong. The shot, he scores! Oh boy, that hurts. Coy Myers, and Bailey is upset with himself, and maybe he can't believe that one got past him. He ducked as the shot was coming at him and went right over as he ducked. And they, the Sockeyes lead 6-4. to four. It was a knuckleball. Watch this. Myers gets over the blue line. He says, I'm just going to shoot this thing up and over top of Bailey. Bailey's like, no, no. He must have thought it was going to go right over the net, and he's really dejected over that one right now. But the Sockeyes are just the other, other extreme. Look at this here. Wow. 6-4 to four on that goal by Coy Myers. That really hurts. Lots of time. I don't want to say lots of time now. I've been saying time is running out, but there is still two and a half minutes left, and to go down by two on a goal like that, that is devastating. And no one really to fault but the goaltender on that one. Bailey should have had it. He misplayed it. Assisted by number one goaltender Jeff Godet. Time of the goal, 17:31. Look out! Here's a Buckaroos a rebound, a save there by Godet. What a save Godet by Godet! makes Gaudet. a save, and he just got an assist on that goal by Coy Myers, and makes it six to four. Now there's another shot, and it goes just off the mark. That's a real backbreaker. That goal for the Buckaroos for Brad Bailey. That's a tough. He's made some key saves tonight and many nights, and that's a real tough one to give up. Finds his team down by two and just under two minutes remaining in this game. But don't count this team out. Sockeyes just want to take control of the puck here and try and just dump it in like that. They get center ice, dump it in, waste, waste some time. Now they got to stop the Buckaroos right at the blue line and hope they can get it back in again. We got a penalty coming up. Oh, that's a slashing penalty. That'll go to uh, Russ Brew. He took a good hack at one of the Buckaroo players. So a power play opportunity here. Their fifth of the game. There's that save Godet made. A nice toe save. He just stuck the leg out in desperation. And he got to the puck. Well, good chance here. This is, I guess, the last chance for the Buckaroos to, to pull. They need two goals. A minute 22 left. They're on the power play. Watch for Bailey to come out if they can get control in the Sockeyes end. Here's the penalty. Brew. Two minutes for slashing. Time of the call, 18.38. And Bailey goes to the bench. Bailey has gone to the bench, so the Buckaroos are two men up. Two men up with 68 seconds left. Six to four, the score. 55 seconds left, and the net is empty. Puck cleared out. And we have a stoppage in play with 42 seconds left. Forty-two seconds left here in this uh, third period. The Sockeyes leading 6-4. Oh, 
chances of the Buckaroos getting two here is not all that great, but uh, we will not count the Buckaroos out just yet. Two goals in 42 seconds, Mark. What do you think? Well, it's possible. Look at the Sockeyes. Two goals in 30 seconds earlier on yep, to tie this right. game up. So with six attackers out there and the power play, they've got a six-skater against four-skater advantage. So that's smart coaching by by Grant Kerr. We'll see if it pays off. Sockeyes have got good guys out there. West, Overgaard, Tar, and Bowling. Back to the point. Katnick with a shot. Got in to save. The rebound in front. Cleared away and out. 27 seconds left. Sockeye shorthanded the open net and just comes clear of it. 22 seconds now left as the Buckaroos come to center. Cross the line. Back there for Ebner. Ebner over there to Lindsay. Drop pass to Katnick. Katnick plays it across. 10 seconds left. The shot in front. The tip behind the net. Center. They're not going to do it. Five seconds left. They may get one here. They don't. It goes to the corner in front. The game is over. A hard fought effort, not a hard hot effort, a hard fought effort. And six to four win for the Richmond Sockeyes after being down two to nothing early on. And they're really happy there as they come off the bench to congratulate each other. Here's the goaltender saves. 23. Richmond's number one, Jeff got it. 13 stops for a total of 28. Ladies and gentlemen, your third period scoring summary is coming up right after the unofficial save count as after three periods. We're going to take a look if we can get a shot at Patrick center ice in Braves. just a moment here. As the players come off, they uh, we will see the three stars from tonight's game as selected by my colleague here in the broadcast booth in this 6-4 to four Richmond win. And they're a happy bunch of campers. They... And they now, ladies their and next... gentlemen, here's tonight's Here, let's pick up the PA announcer, Delaney Bramley. Tonight's third star with one goal and one assist from your Sockeyes, number 25, Jeff Overgaard. He played a big game, Overgaard. Tonight's second star from Port Coquitlam, number 17, with two goals, Mike Ebner. Ebner also had an assist. And tonight's first star, one goal, two assists, uh, Marion Ivanusic. He made it happen tonight. Marion Ivanusic was the turning point Your in this hockey game. Scoring. Great game for Ivanusic, and uh, he basically made the difference tonight. For sure, um, he was in on uh, he was in on the uh, second goal that made it 2-2. He helped set up Overgaard. Then he made it. Uh, got in get on in on that power play goal uh, early in the second period. And then, and then, of course, here, let's take a look at this here. Look at this. This is Swanson's goal. Well, that was that great move Ivan Usyk made to make that happen. He waited till the defenseman went down. He got around him and made the perfect pass over to Swanson. And Swanson made no mistake at all. Great play by Ivan Usyk. And I can't argue with your, uh, not that I would argue anyways with your, with your selections, but, but Overgaard, the third star, and um, Ebner for sure, he got those two goals, made it two to nothing. And the Buckaroos were just playing sound defense early on there in the early part of the Hearst period until the Sockeyes got those two quick goals. And then they seemed to just be, they seemed to be shaken especially Bailey he was just he was rattled I mean he was nervous handling the puck and the whole bit exactly and if, if we could just watch the first and second period Jeff Lindsay could have been in that three stars so could have Davies but then the second half the second period and the third period there was they weren't even there that's why they weren't in the three star selection yeah, they, it, it was, uh, it's, it's always a tough thing when you're picking three stars out of a game when there's so many players. But And then Ivan Usyk, like you say, he was in on, um, on I guess, the last two of the last three goals anyways, or the Sokka goal, goals and the, their, their third goal. And then, their, then, of course, that goal that Swanson got, um, a big effort by him and the, the team all around to get this victory after being down early on. But uh, those, those players, Ivan Usyk, Ebner, and Overgaard, first, second, and third stars, respectively, and well-deserving. It's, it's, it's neat to see, game in and game out, the, the Sockeyes always seem to come through. They were, it was 4-4 after two, but again, they pull it out in the third period, and they look good doing it, too. A lot of heart, a lot of effort. That's the Sockeyes team. They look great in the third period. With that win, they've got now 25 wins on the season. Starting to put some ground on Ridge Meadows, but by no means have they got first place locked up. They've got a game tomorrow night, this game being Thursday night, uh, tonight here. Um, Friday night, the uh, 19th of January, the Sockeyes will travel to Ridge Meadows to battle Ridge Meadows. And they've had um, Ridge Meadows the last time out there. The Sockeyes played them. It was a 6-5 to five loss. Sockeyes battled back, but couldn't quite get it done. So Ridge Meadows, I mean, Richmond, Ridge Meadows, and Port Coquitlam are 1, 2, and 3 in the league standings. 
Um, it's going to be a battle all the way down to the final game of the season. I it, mean, for who finishes where and see how the playoff matches come and the whole bit. It is going to be a battle because Ridge Meadows can score goals. So can Fort Coquitlam. Uh, the Ridge Meadows defense is a little bit suspect. Brad Bailey in goal is a great goaltender. It's going to be tough. It is going to be tough. The Sockeyes are a great team, but they've got great teams behind them as well. Before we, we I agree, uh, before we close out here, I just want to get in one comment on the, uh, well, let's take a look here at Myers. There's the goal, and that was that was um, a real backbreaker there. Myers, great, good good work for Coy Myers. I don't know what goal that is for him on the season just offhand. I'll try to take a quick look. What, what is that? That's about his uh, I think second, third or something. Second goal. Uh, he's actually got, no, I'm not giving him enough credit. He's got oh, yeah, seven he's got goals. More. That's his seventh goal. you got to like goals like that every once in a while. A good knuckleball right yeah. over top of the goalie. you got to love it. For sure, for sure. Just want to congratulate the, uh, as we mentioned earlier, in case it was Miss Sean Tarr of Richmond getting uh, the winning in the All-Star game, the rapid-fire shooting. He was a co-winner with Kevin Stromeyer of Abbotsford. And then, of course, uh, uh, Mary and Ivan Usyk being the winner of the uh, the North or the South Division Player of the Game. So the two Sockeyes just mentioned those in the All-Star Game at Abbotsford last week. Mark Patrick, um, I think we've done a we've done our duty here tonight. Okay. Okay. We've Thanks very much. Thanks very much for for joining me and no joining us here once again. Final score once again here from Richmond's Minaru Arena. The Sockeyes battle back and win. Six to four, Richmond six, Port Coquitlam four. For Mark Patrick and the rest of the Rogers Four crew, I'm Mark Jones saying thank you for joining us, and we'll talk to you next time on Rogers Four Sports. Good night.